Welcome to Electron Line. Now we're going to talk about another type of classification called luminosity class. It was recognized initially when the HR diagram was devised and they started using it, how useful it was in determining the type of star we were looking at, because the vast majority of stars were on the main sequence, and so they fell into a very nice categorization where we have the spectral class OB, AF, G, K, M, and the spectral type, the subdivisions of these classes. And then we were able to find out exactly what star we were looking at by looking at the spectral lines and we could see how different elements and different elements in an ionization state would appear on the spectrum. And by that, by analyzing that, and by analyzing the light coming from those stars and setting it through UBV uh, filters, and by looking at the temperature of the stars using Wien's law, we could really figure out what type of star we were looking at. But once in a while we would look at something that even though the color and the temperature seemed to match, the, spectro, the spectrum of these stars were looking very different. And we weren't quite sure what, what that was and what the reason for that was. And then we began to realize there was also some different types of stars that had the same surface temperature and the same color but had a very different spectrum. For example, if you look at the M-class stars, we know that these typically are very small, reddish-looking stars. They become smaller and smaller as so we go down on the main sequence. But then, with the same surface temperature of roughly 3,000 degrees, 3,000 Kelvin, we noticed that there were some other stars that were up in these regions right here. They were very luminous, and yet they were same. They had the same surface temperature and the same colorization, but of course we had these extremely large supergiants, we had large giants, we had some subgiants. They all had the same color, same temperature, and we had to find a way in finding the difference between the stars by looking at the spectrum. And we began to realize that we could actually do that. We could subclassify them, and so we came up with what we call the, the luminosity class. So in the supergiants, and of course they range in color all the way from blue to red, we had two subdivisions. We call them the very luminous. So we had these very luminous supergiants. And then we had what we call the luminous supergiants. Oop, I guess I already have the word supergiants up there. And so we call those the luminosity class 1A and 1B. So those became 1A and 1B. And then we had a class, so then we looked at the giant stars, the red giants, and we saw that there's some very big red giants, not quite as, as large as the super giants, but bigger than the typical uh, red giants, so we call those the bright giants. And that became luminosity class 2, and they, they fell a little bit lower on the HR diagram in the luminosity scale. Remember, when we go up, it is greater luminosity, when we go down, smaller luminosity, so we call those the very bright giants. So that was the very luminous supergiants, the luminous supergiants, the bright giants, and that was then the luminosity class 2, and we used a Roman numeral type of uh, way of uh, classifying those. Then we had the class which we call the regular type of giants, so that was luminosity class 3. And then we had a class of giants which were not quite as big as a typical red giant, but they were much bigger than the main sequence stars, so we called them subgiants. And those also could be recognized as having a different spectrum. So we call that luminosity class 4 for the subgiants. And then finally we end up on the main sequence where, of course, the vast majority of the stars are. And so we call that luminosity class 5. So when we talk about a luminosity class 5, we talk about a main sequence star. And then we realized there were some stars that were kind of like main sequence stars, but not quite of the same size and, and uh, coloration and spectrum as the typical main sequence stars, especially in the region of the red dwarfs, if we want to call these red dwarfs because they're small red stars, we have what we call the sub-dwarf category. And so for that we had a luminosity class that was known as luminosity class 6. And finally there was one more star on the main sequence that we had not accounted for yet, the very small hot on the surface stars that are down to the size of about a planet like the Earth. And so we would then have a seventh luminosity class, which would then be recognized as being the white dwarfs. And again, they have a very different kind of spectrum as the other stars on the HR diagram. So all we had to do is actually recognize which stars we're talking about based upon the spectrum, and then we could classify them. We're actually able to do that. So we now have what we call luminosity class. This is then 
uh, combined with the spectral class and the spectral type and from that we're able to really recognize what stars we're talking about. And so that's what we mean by the luminosity class.